Hello, once again, my friends, I am Marksman, and today we're doing another keyboard, of course. I mean, what do you expect at this point? Um, this is another live commentary one, so I'm sorry for any background noise. Uh, I didn't want to do all the recording after because it's a huge pain in the butt. But today, we are doing something called the Daisy 40. It is a 40% keyboard from KPR Republic. And I have a lot of thoughts on this already because I have done a little bit of work behind the scenes to make sure this piece of shit's gonna work. <laughs> so long story short, uh, it's a huge pain to flash this thing. Like, oh my God, it might be one of the most irritating keyboards I've ever had to actually like make. And I haven't even finished the board yet. Um, right here, this key was not working. Uh, when I first did it, it was not even like a function key. I held the tweezers in here and then used a separate set to test other things. It just just wasn't working like at all. Um, I contacted the manufacturer and I mean, they've been not great at all. Like this thing is like been in transit with no updates for like two weeks, but it finally arrived. Um, and then now the, the key was dead on arrival or I thought it was. I managed to flash it. Their Google Drive link that teaches you how to flash this board is dead on their website. Um, and then the reference that other people on the internet have said, oh, go look at the XD60 uh, guide for how to flash it. That's dead too. So I had to go really dig deep. Um, I found YDK, I'm gonna link it in the description. I don't remember the name of it, but it's like a YDMK and then you use the QMK file, drag that in and then you can flash it because QMK doesn't detect this keyboard even though it's on there. So after all of that, I did manage to get it done. <laughs> so hopefully uh, it works uh, from completely. I mean, I did test all the keys with tweezers, but you know, something could go wrong with soldering. So let's get to it. I'm gonna do a bunch of stuff behind the scenes. I actually have some KBD fans um, modular foam, and I'm gonna go ahead and use some of that and try and make this a little bit more packed in tight here. Um, it also comes with an acrylic diffuser on the bottom, and I really actually kind of like the style of this bent steel case. I mean, it's just a very unique look. So, I mean, I'm gonna do a bunch of stuff. Uh, I'll show you the end results, but I'm not gonna be, <laughs> I'm not gonna just like record a whole heck of a lot of stuff like I usually do. Um, this is gonna be a pretty quick little video on the 40%. We'll see how it sounds at the end. Okay, so I'm back. I've put all of the modular foam in places where it wouldn't interfere with other stuff. Um, I also installed some stabs. These are actually leftovers from my old GMMK Pro. Um, they were very bad on that board. Um, they were under lubed, but also over lubed, but also they had the stab pads so that it couldn't come back up. But I figured I could probably retune them and use them for this, so I did. Um, next up, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and install the switches and, and start soldering this thing. I do need to, I think, wait, what the, f wait, 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 okay, that's fine. I got scared for a second. Um, I do need to um, probably screw in the pieces of this uh, with the, oh wait, no, I can't. This is wacky. This is a weird one, but we'll figure this out. Um, I'll be back when I figure this out. Uh, I might just have to install the switches, uh, solder them in and, and kind of hope for the best. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. And here it is. This is the this is the finished product. I can't actually type on it because it's plugged in, but I'm going to show you the bottom with the acrylic diffuser. It's very bright in this environment, but if you if it, if it was darker, you could actually see the light diffusing. Maybe you can see it on my hands. But it does look pretty good when you don't have two floodlights 
uh, an above light and ambient lighting, but it actually sounds pretty good. I mean, for how much effort this was, I'm unsure the level of worth, but, but it ended up being a pretty cool little end product. So some problems that I had, um, the stabilizers, um, remember how I said I was going to use the GMMK Pro ones? Yeah, those didn't fit. And by didn't fit, I mean they caused so much interference that the keycap would not even come back up. Um, I didn't even think I could fix it. I have no idea um, why that was the case. But I used some genuine cherry stabs. Um, those were the only things that worked. I tried Duroc likes and the actual Durocs. They couldn't fit back under here and I had already soldered the board down. So it was a, another huge pain in the ass, but um, cherry ones I had clipped and lubed and did all the, the fancy stuff to them. Oops, I bumped the camera. Um, I did all that stuff and now they actually work and they sound pretty good after a little bit of tuning and modding. Um, the other thing is keycaps are really, really difficult to set up for this. In fact, I don't even think this is lined up properly, but it doesn't matter too, too much. It's just, I mean, this is already a borderline usable keyboard. It is just barely functional. It has two layers um, and I'll actually put in the description the, um, if I can, I'll put the layout that I used as well because the one that it comes with is a little funky and this key doesn't work on that layout for some reason. But everything else, oh, also it's not USB type C, it's this one for some reason. I don't, I don't know why I had to bust out like my old camera charger to be able to use this keyboard, which is just, it's just silly. Why would you do that? I, whatever. Anyway, this thing was very difficult. Oh, also one of my keys was messed up, so I had to desolder it. Um, with my desoldering thingy that was that was also difficult, but in the end We have a functional keyboard. It didn't go as bad as my last major solder project uh, Which is saying a lot really um, but Here we are and it works. It does I, I can assure you I'm not gonna show you because that would take a lot of Editing that I truthfully just don't want to do and I, I actually am going to walk you guys through how I flash this keyboard because there's no documentation anywhere um, and the uh, Website does not help you KPR Republic says nah, dude fuck you hanging out to dry We're not even gonna update our fucking Google Drive links, dude. What what come on don't buy from KPR Republic But if you already have this keyboard, then I'll show you how to fix it anyway I like the look of it though. That's my closing thought. I like the look of it. All right, sound test. And as promised, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the process that I went through to actually get this little piece of shit set up. So um, what we have to do is we're gonna have to set up the default layout, which I use the KTech Daisy, which is confusing because there are actually KP Republic keyboards, but I guess the Daisy does not count as one. Um, and so what we're going to do is I have already modified this one to kind of be like how I want it to be. So a few notable changes is I changed this from backspace to space. Um, and then I also added left alt to here so that I can use things like um, like alt F10 or whatever if I were to get a cool play in a game or whatever, you know, whatever, that kind of stuff. And so these are function one and function two essentially um, or the, the other two layers. So what we're gonna do is you have to hit compile and then it's gonna do this for a while. Um, I've already done this, so I'm not gonna go through the entire process, but uh, when this is done, you want to download the firmware. So this one right here. Um, yeah, okay, you can see my mouse in the capture. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> anyway, you're gonna wanna go here, download the firmware, and then 
Um, so QMK configurator, so the QMK toolbox that this uh, actually does, does not work with the daisy. Even though it has the preset for it, it does not work. So what we have to do is we have to actually go to this place, uh, ydkb.io, and I'll have the link in the description. And um, I thought it's like a general tool. So there's no download link here, but what you have to do is you have to actually find the daisy in this setup, which is again, the KTEC daisy. And then you're gonna have to download the um, reflash tool. Um, I think you can you can probably do the same setup here as you did in QMK, but I, I find QMK a little easier to work with. So I already have the reflash tool downloaded and it's this one right here. Um, and then you're gonna have to set it to the daisy and then you have to hit choose firmware and then, well, good thing there was nothing embarrassing there, but you're gonna wanna click your daisy layout dot hex and then it's gonna open Actually, I'll just show you. It's gonna open, um, let me unplug my keyboard so it doesn't like mess with anything. It's gonna open this. And so then what you have to do is you have to unplug your daisy, hold escape, and then plug the daisy back in. And so if you have tweezers, you have to put the tweezers in there unless you've already soldered it, which I wouldn't recommend doing. Um, you should definitely do this before you do all your soldering and stuff. And then basically it's going to flash your keyboard with whatever you have it set for um, from your QMK file. So that's all you need to do. Um, I'm glad to help if, if this helped you. But anyway, uh, that's that's how you how you get the daisy to work. And there you have it. This is the uh, that's how you do the daisy thing. I mean, it was kind of a huge pain in the butt, but uh, we got there at the end. And I guess that's what matters. Um, the end product, not too bad. Um, the one thing that I will suggest and what I did is I actually ordered a little USB mini to USB-C converter. And because the little port is so recessed in, it can kind of just be a USB-C keyboard. And I'm, it's on its way, so I can't show you yet. But if that works, it's going to be really cool because I don't like having to use USB mini. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it helped if you do own this keyboard because <laughs> I don't want anyone to have to go through that. Also, don't buy this keyboard, but if you already bought it, I hope I helped you. All right. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time.